Hey, what is up? This video is about how to make a dollar store cheesesteak, and I'm not calling it a Philly cheesesteak because my girlfriend is from Philly, and if I did, she would kill me. I may have been a touch too negative in my review of their dollar store steaks. My mother may have texted me saying, they're going to sue you if you don't take that down. Uh, so it might be in my best interest to show you how to actually make these little tiny uh, meat skins edible. Let's go. Walking into the Dollar Tree, I've got, I know I need a few ingredients. Okay, so I need steak and I'll be getting the Stampede Dollar Store steak. Uh, I need butter, I need cheese, I need bread. I, ideally, I'll get like a sub bun bread and cheese Whiz, because I know they use cheese Whiz in Philadelphia, or cheese in a can if it's not cheese Whiz brand. But I don't know, we're limited by what the Dollar Tree has in stock, so I might have to make a few exceptions and uh, try and spitball it and see if I can still make a nice sandwich. Here is the ribeye. It is Stampede brand, 3.5 ounce, but they're heavily brined, so when I cook it, it goes down to like less than an ounce. I'm gonna get two of them. If you want to watch uh, a video solely on the meat, I posted that a few weeks ago. Watch that; it's not very appetizing. Butter is extremely important. It'll add flavor. It'll add texture, but also it's gonna help the steak cook more evenly. And with a millimeter thick frozen bullshit steak being cooked on a Walmart stovetop, we're gonna need all the help we can get. Next up is the buns. Uh, there's no sub buns here. We have a bag of bagels, some white bread, and some hamburger buns. And out of those three options, hamburger buns seem to clearly be what is best. So there was no cheese Whiz or cheese in the can, so we had to go with, uh, I don't want to call it regular cheese because this is not regular cheese, but American cheese singles. And what I'm going to try and do is cut them up so they melt faster and hopefully it gives us a consistency of cheese in the can. We'll see. A lot of people use knives when they cook, but that's a bit too unsafe for me, so I'm gonna use this. Way safer. Machetes are great for warehouse cooking. I recommend everyone has at least 15. Thing about this $9 hot plate I bought is that it doesn't really tell you how hot it actually is. So we're gonna put some butter on here and that's gonna give us an idea uh, of how relatively hot the, uh, the metal surface is because I don't want it to be too cold and then burn the steaks and I don't want it to be too hot and then just ruin the steaks immediately. So put some butter on there. I'll show you how the buns are too in a second. They're not really the best buns in the world. If you look at them like you're going to see right here, they're flat. They are very sweet. A lot of sugar in there, I think. They don't taste old, um, but they taste like a McDonald's value menu bun does. The butter's starting to get kind of fragrant in the pan, so I'll put the bread down, put some more butter in there to really make sure that uh, we get some fat in that meat. And uh, I'm going to cook the meat. The meat that you're going to see here, it's packaged in like a shrink wrap type package. And as it thaws, which I let it thaw for about 45 minutes, I guess. Uh, I can't let it thaw too much because there's so much water in these steaks that it's going to just like be too gross to handle. And I don't want to get steak, juice, salt water spilled everywhere in my warehouse. Uh, so I'm, they're still like relatively solid. Um, they're kind of, uh-oh, <laughs> they're kind of kind of hard to open the steak up. I might have to use the machete here. I used a pair of scissors last time. Whatever, not a big deal. I mean, it's steak in, in a plastic bag. I would rather have it be too secure than not secure enough. Here's a mistake I made if I was trying to make it, like, perfect. I should have patted the steak down with a paper towel or a washcloth and get a lot of the excess water off there. I didn't, uh, and so you're going to see just steam rising off of this steak uh, very, very, very prodigiously. The stove is currently at the max temperature. I'm gonna flip this steak just to get both sides kind of brown, give it as much uh, texture as I can initially. 
put the other steak on. Again, what I should have done and I didn't do is pat the steak down so it doesn't uh, release so much moisture initially. Again, I didn't do that. I'm just hacking at it with machete. Uh, and the, the quality of the meat is so low that I'm not really stressing over it. Uh, but again, high temperature right here. And then I'm gonna lower it once I get the uh, the texture that I want on the, the exterior of the meat. That doesn't, you know, searing it like this, kind of searing it, doesn't help it retain moisture any more than it would. But I like the way it tastes and looks. If I just threw the cheese square on top of the steak, it would be more of a disaster than inevitably it's going to be. It would just capture moisture underneath it and kind of parachute up in the middle like a, a slice of bologna if you were a kid and used to eat those kind of sandwiches. So I'm cutting it up into small strips and my hope, my hope is that the meat is so thin the heat will transfer through it and melt the, uh, the cheese strips on top but again, this is my first time doing this, so uh, what happens is going to be news to me as it is news to you. My plan did not work. Uh, the meat is definitely drying out before the heat can transfer through it. Maybe if I had put the cheese on earlier, I don't think so though. So what I'm trying to do now is flip it and just um, melt the cheese on a low heat. Right now the stove top's on like two, which who knows what temperature that correlates to. But we're on two right now, and that's not burning everything in sight. So my hope is that, okay, I can put the cheese on there and it'll kind of melt and it'll mix with the fat uh, from the steak and the butter and whatever else is coming out of there and make maybe like kind of a, a pseudo liquid cheese but it's not it's not looking good at all at this point uh, just pushing it down there trying to get any sort of molten activity I can uh, I'm gonna pull it out then chop it out on the, the cutting board let it cool down and as it cool down any uh, liquid around the steak, any cheese that may have melted is going to be absorbed back into the steak the same way like when a sponge cools down, it soaks up uh, any moisture around it. All right, guys, I hate to break it to you, but I think this might be as good as it gets. Any more heat, and I'm just going to totally ruin the steak. I don't want to burn the cheese to the uh, the metal, and uh, I don't know, man. We'll see what happens next. I do. I will say, though, that compared to when I cooked the steak by itself like a month ago, this is far, far more appetizing. I think that's as good as we're gonna get. So let's uh, plate this bitch. And there you have it, folks. Your dollar store cheesesteak. Boy, oh boy. Doesn't that look absolutely delicious? Doesn't that look like maybe the best dollar store cheesesteak you've seen in your entire life? I'd say so. I'm getting hungry just looking at it. Okay, so moment of truth. Uh, we got the the dollar store cheesesteak right here. There it is for everyone to see. Uh, it didn't turn out exactly how I thought it would. The consistency of the cheese is not uh, the cheese whiz consistency I wanted. Um, the steak is still overcooked. It's really hard to get the right consistency on the steak because 
It's so thin, it goes from undercooked to overcooked in like two seconds. And I had it on low heat uh, for the after I got the initial like browning on the bottom side, I turned it to low heat. So um, I'm gonna have to try some new stuff with this to make it better. We'll, we'll see how it tastes though. It tastes, you know, the meat and the cheese taste like a McDonald's cheeseburger. It really does. I mean, when it's all said and done, is it worth $5 for two and change Philly cheesesteaks? Absolutely not. Go to a store and buy them. Go to a restaurant and buy them. It's definitely better than just the meat by itself. It's definitely better than, like, really poorly cooked or burnt meat. But in terms of, like, meat that's edible, bottom tier. But what do you expect from the Dollar Tree? Like, they don't, you don't go into the Dollar Tree looking for gourmet food. Or do you? Mmm. I was just looking at the butter, and it says, they have, they have the ingredients right here. And then below it, there's a little asterisk. And it says, <laughs> ingredients not in regular butter. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that's what we're working with here, folks. My final take on this. Um, if you need a cheesesteak and you only have $5 and there's no cheesesteak restaurants you can go to and you'll die if you don't get one, this would be an okay alternative. If you have any flexibility at all in your plans, <clears throat> I'm not going to recommend this because it was edible. It wasn't like the worst thing in the world, but if I had to rate every single meat I've eaten and like ate on purpose, this would be bottom of the list. If you're still here through that whole video, thank you so much. Comment on the video with what you want to see next. Like it. Hold your friends down with force and peel their eyes open and make them watch it. See you guys later.